गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स माई नेम इज़ विजय गुप्ता एंड यू आर वॉचिंग बायोलॉजी क्लासेज सो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस क्लास ऑफ बायोलॉजी टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ टूथ एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज दैट इन अवर बॉडी डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम इज प्रेजेंट इन अवर डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम टूथ इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट सो इन दिस वीडियो आई टेल यू अबाउट द इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर अबाउट द एनाटॉमी ऑफ अ टूथ so let us start the video first of all the first point that is the study of teeth is odontology that is a separate branch of biology in which teeth are studied that is called odontology so remember the point study of teeth is known as odontology now the next point is teeth are primarily employed by animals in cutting grinding or crushing food now what is the main function of teeth as we all know that the main function of teeth is cutting the food grinding the food and crushing the food so it is the basic function of teeth next point is teeth of mammals are derived from ectoderm and mesoderm as we know that there are three germ layers are present inside our body that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm but the teeth are originated from ectoderm and mesoderm some parts of teeth may be originated from ectoderm and some are mesoderm so the origin of teeth in mammals is ectoderm and mesoderm now what about the structure of teeth as we can see in the diagram in the ls of tooth you can see that there are three main parts are present in the teeth number 1 the exposed part which is present that is called crown or head the middle part of a tooth is called as neck while the lower most part is known as root which is embedded inside the jaw bone so you can see that there are three main parts present in the tooth so i would like to tell you in detail the teeth consist of three main parts first one head now what about head head is also known as crown which is the exposed part as i have told you before the head consists of following parts first of all the outermost part of head is called as enamel enamel is the hardest part of our body it is the whitest and shiny part and it covers the teeth from the outside so first of all i would like to tell you about the enamel so the head or crown consists of the outermost layer of enamel so enamel is a whitish hardest shiny material as you can see it is whitish hardest material of the body and shiny material why material because it is non living so it is a shiny material secreted by ameloblast or enameroblast cells it's a very important point for neat examination that the enamel of tooth is secreted by ameloblast cell or enameroblast cells during the development of teeth these cells are present which secrete the enamel of our teeth so it's the important point for you the enamel is made up of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate phosphate as we know that the enamel consists of mostly consists of inorganic substance so it is especially consist of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate that is the major component of the enamel resistant to decay it does not decay as it is buried in the soil still it remains so it is resistant to decay now the next point is dentine just below the enamel a flexible and hard tissue is present which is known as dentine it is the main part of a tooth so you can see i have made with orange color so the dentine is the second hardest material of our body it is the main part of the teeth it is secreted by odontoblast cells again an important an important question for you that you can see in the diagram odontoblast cells there is a layer which is surrounding the pulp cavity the layer is called as odontoblast 
and this odontoblast layer is made up of odontoblast cells and these odontoblast cells secrete dentine so it is the important question that dentine is secreted by the odontoblast cell which are present at the outer lining of the pulp cavity so this is the dentine it consists of 62 to 69 percent of inorganic substances as i told as i have told you before that uh, the enamel consists of inorganic substances about 90 percent so the dentine also consists of inorganic substances which are 62 to 69 percent it is heart tissue as we know that it is the heart tissue and containing microscopic tubules the dentine is made up of small tubules which you can see in the diagram and these tubules are microscopic so it consists of microscopic tubules so it was all about dentine now just below the dentine you can see in the diagram there is a hollow cavity is present and this hollow cavity is known as pulp cavity so the pulp cavity is situated at the middle of the teeth and it is responsible for the oxygen supply and blood supply in the tooth as you can see in the diagram there are a network of blood vessels and nerves in, through which oxygen comes inside the pulp cavity and co2 goes out from the pulp cavity so the pulp cavity a cavity lined by odontoblast cells as you can see in the diagram the pulp cavity is lined by the odontoblast cells so the cavity <clears throat> lined by the odontoblast cells consisting blood vessels and nerves as i have told you that the pulp cavity consists of a network of blood vessels and neurons it gives rise to root canal from pulp cavity root canals arises you can see these are the root canals so root canals arises from the pulp cavity and it passes through the root of the bone of the uh, of the tooth so these are the root canals arises from the pulp cavity so just after pulp cavity i would like to tell you about cementum now what is cementum cementum is a layer of connective tissue as you can see in the diagram i made with the green color so it is the cementum cementum is the layer of connective tissue through which our tooth attached to the jaw bone so it plays a very important role in the attachment of tooth so cementum is a layer of connective tissue that binds the root to the jaw bone so the root of the tooth joined with the jaw bone with the help of cementum it is a connective layer tissue connective tissue layer okay now next is neck the second and the middle part of the tooth is known as neck as you can see in the diagram this part is known as neck and it is it consists of two important things first one is gingiva and the second one is cementum so the neck is made up of cementum and gingiva neck the middle part as you can see in the diagram neck is the middle part composed of gums and cementum and it consists of two main parts gums and cementum which form the middle part or the neck of the tooth last part is the root as you can see in the diagram the embedded part of the tooth the part which embedded inside the jaw bone is known as as you can see in the diagram that is known as root so the root is the basal part of tooth it is the basal part of the tooth it is embedded in the socket or alveolus what is the mean of socket or alveolus as we know that our jaw bone is known as alveolar bone as you can see in the diagram it is the alveolar bone so this bone is known as alveolar bone and the socket which is present in the alveolar bone as you can see suppose that it is the socket it is the socket in which our tooth is embedded so the socket of alveolar bone is known as alveolus so the root is embedded in the socket or the alveolus root canal is passes through the root as you can see in the diagram root canals are passes through the roots these are the roots of a tooth and from these roots root canals are passes 
which supply the blood vessels and nerves to the pulp cavity. So, it was all about the structure of tooth. I hope you can easily understand all these things. Still, if you have any confusion, any question, then you may ask in the comment section. So, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.